Lambert? Yes. Marley? Marshall? Martin? Here. Massett? Here. McDermott? Melendez? Here. Mello Miller? Here. Merritt? Here. Monahan? Here. Newsom? Here. Oliver? Pascalini? Perry? Here. Powers? Here. Pacino? Quinn? Richards? Here. Rogers? Stanford? Here. Stevenson? Here. Streeter Irma? Here. Streeter James? Here. Strode? Washington? Here. Wells? Here. White House? Here. Whitney? Here. Eben? Here. Starkly? Here. 28. 28. Thank you. All right. We have a quorum. And I would like to welcome two new members uh, to our RTM. We have uh, Representative Ali Starkley from District 1. And Repres <laughs> Representative Dane Stevenson from District 3, welcome. And I also just wanted to note that I did receive correspondence from Representative Quinn, Oliver, Marshall, Cecilia Fleming, and Rogers that they would not be able to be here at the meeting tonight and from Representative Bailey that he would be late. So if you would all stand for a moment of silence. Representative Irma Streeter, would you please lead us in the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on our agenda is uh, the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Is there a motion? Second? Thank you. We had a few motions. Okay, is there, we have a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, is there any discussion of that? Representative uh, Chase? Uh, just pointing out a uh, typo on page three at the bottom. I think the word should be thorough instead of through. Yes. I also had a change. I would, was hoping I'll give you the actual language, mm -hmm. but I was hoping on page two, under citizens' petitions, that we could indicate that by a show of hands, a majority, if not all, RTM members indicated they would accept a 7.30 start on Mondays if necessary. And I would uh, like to um, amend on page seven under budget discussions where I stated that all questions must go through the moderator, I would like to add, or the committee chair, because that's what the RTM rules state. What? I can give you those. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes from our February RTM meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. At this time, uh, this portion of the RTM agenda is where the RTM welcomes comments from citizens. Each presentation should be limited to 10 minutes or less, and citizens should, if possible, submit written comments. Presentations should be limited to matters pertinent to Groton. Either I or members through myself shall ask questions only in order to clarify the speaker's presentation. Responses may be given by myself or the town manager, and citizens should make their presentations from the lectern and state their name and address. For the record, 
I believe that there, no one has signed up, but at this time, if anyone would like to uh, have comments, provide comments, please come forward. No? Okay. All right. At this point is a reception of communications, and I actually did receive a few, and then I'll open it up for other people's communications. But I did receive a message from Representative Rogers, and she asked that I read this letter. Dear colleagues of the RTM, I have been unable to attend the winter sessions of the RTM because I am currently in California helping to care for my aging father. Among other conditions too rare and complex to describe here, my father suffers from debilitating neuropathy pain. Recently, I worked with his physician to acquire a medical cannabis card that has allowed him to try CBD treatments. The improvement in his quality of life and pain management has been remarkable and my experience with the dispensary here in Santa Cruz has been professional, safe, and educational. I am sharing this because I have been disheartened and embarrassed to read disparaging and derogatory public comments from members of this body regarding the marijuana dispensary that recently requested a location change in Groton. This new business, formally approved and selected by state officials, stands to benefit a significant local population and contribute critical tax revenue. I feel it is unprofessional and counterproductive for members of the RTM to publicly criticize any new business looking to legally establish roots in Groton, and I implore you to focus on growing our local economy, not creating a hostile environment for entrepreneurs. I look forward to rejoining this effort in person next month. Thank you, Representative Annie Rogers, District Six. I also, let's see, received an uh, email from uh, citizen Carl Parazzotti, who uh, was forwarding an article about the tax burden in Connecticut and uh, urged uh, a relief on his taxes. And um, I also wanted to call your attention to an item that was included in your budget. Uh, in your minutes, rather, in your packet that you should have received, which was a letter from uh, John Burt, and it was in response, uh, an explanation, um, uh, I believe it was, to Carl Parazzotti, as requested by Representative Roseanne Katowski. And so I ask um, that you read that. Uh, it was, I believe, in response to the letter from uh, Mr. Parazzotti, and I wanted to note if the letter, the response from uh, town manager is unclear. I'm happy to refer specific issues to the finance committee. Um, I also want to let you know that the budget books are available in the town clerk's office at this point. And uh, I also wanted to mention that there is a parade on the 24th of March. I'm not sure you can still RSVP. A few of you have. Um, that's for St. Patrick's Day. There's another parade scheduled for the 4th of July. And if you are interested in participating in either of those, especially the former St. Pat's, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, I think that's all the correspondence I've had. Has anyone else had other correspondence or communications? Okay, so the next item on our agenda is a financial report from the town manager, and I think we have uh, Mr. Zagami here to uh, provide us with that. Good evening. Wow. <laughs> um, Bob Zagami from uh, Director of HR, also Assistant Town Manager, sitting in for uh, John Burr tonight. Um, for the March 13th meeting, Fund balance as of February 28, 2019 is approximately 18 million, which is 14.8% of the FYE 2019 general fund adopted budget. The general contingency budget for FYE 2019 was appropriated at $450,000 with a current balance of $375,207. As of February 28th, the following transfers have been approved. Wage increases, $57,110, and the BOE Board of Ed transfer to meet state minimum budget requirements, the MBR, for $17,683. 
The capital reserve fund balance as of February 28, 2019 is estimated at a million. Two supplemental appropriations have been approved. $330,000 $330, uninterrupted power supply, which is the UPS at the police station, and $9,000 for the golf course uh, clubhouse deck and the ramp re replacement. Um, for the knowledge, the, uh, the joint city town meeting, uh, we're scheduled for a joint city town meeting on March 18th at the city at 6.30 p.m. hosted by the city. And uh, as far as the middle school, you'll see heavy equipment begin stump removal and earthwork probably around April 1st. The, brown, the groundbreaking ceremony is going to be Tuesday, the 23rd of April at 3 o'clock, which is a tentative date, coming in through the high school drive. An invitation will be sent to you as we get closer to that date. And finally, on the uh, retirement, uh, the non-union retirement changes, we're in the process working with the actuaries and with the attorneys uh, uh, on an ordinance to change the retirement plan for new non-union employees. Thank you. I uh, don't believe we have any um, report from economic development, do we? No. Uh, okay. No. Do we have a report from the superintendent of schools? Dr. Grenier, would you like to provide sure. us with an update? Thank you. I have so. Thank you. I just want to be sure that there's enough going around. Did it get down to you, uh, Gary? Oh, you did. Okay. Is it, is it coming? It's coming on the back side. Okay. Uh, there might be. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Great. Well, good evening. I, I wanted to uh, update you on uh, three three topics. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll do number two first, if you don't mind, because that's uh, sort of in the spirit of uh, making sure we understand what's going on with the budget. Uh, the governor's budget uh, was uh, promulgated. <clears throat> of course, it's not the final budget, but we believe this this will be the number. Uh, B. The, for uh, FY20 next year and for FY21, uh, Groton will receive an uh, education cost sharing grant of $25,040,045. Uh, that, that is the same grant we have been receiving for about the last seven or eight years now. And it will continue to be that way because Groton has been designated as, as an alliance district. So that's the one big provision of being an alliance uh, district that, that has a financial impact uh, for, for the district. So let me go back to the first one. I, I, I hope John has already sent this to you, uh, but we're, we would like to invite you in uh, to a, a focus group that's going to be conducted on, uh, on the 20th of March, Wednesday the, the 20th of March. I guess that's a week from today. Uh, Rick Kallenberg is a, is a consultant that uh, we are working with from Learn, and he is, is an expert on magnet schools, and he's going to help us uh, in two areas. One is to uh, figure out uh, good pathways uh, at the middle school, because even when we have one Groton Middle School, we're still going to have the, the pathway, which will be uh, STEM, uh, as the students are, are studying now at uh, at Westside, and arts and humanities will be another pathway, and we want to make sure uh, those groups are appropriately diverse. We, we, we don't, frankly, we don't want all the Westside kids to be in one pathway, uh, well, a year and a half from now, the former Westside kids to be in one pathway, and the former Cutler kids to be in another pathway. We actually want to make sure that they, they get uh, integrated 
in a, in a diverse way. And so this, um, this, this fellow is going to help us. So uh, if you would be so kind uh, to let the office staff in my office, I left you an email there. We, we, we don't want to overwhelm them with a huge group, uh, but uh, it, it would be great if we had uh, some of you there. We're going to invite the town council and, and the board of ed. And he'll give us a He'll give us a, a kind of lay of the land uh, for the middle school. And the other thing, of course, is that the two new elementary schools, <clears throat> one to be built on the site of Westside and one to be built on the site of Cutler, uh, uh, they are also going to be uh, diversity magnet schools. And so there are requirements that the, that the student body at each of those schools be diverse. And the, and the way we're going to do that is uh, by opening up uh, magnet pathways for them, magnet themes. So we, we'd really appreciate some input on what themes would, would be appropriate. And, and we're doing focus groups with parents and teachers and administrators and uh, other staff members, but we, we'd, uh, we'd really like uh, to have some RTM members participate. And then the last, uh, the last item is on Monday night, uh, Susan Austin uh, did a uh, a presentation on the accountability index, the 12, 12 indicators that, that are used uh, by the state of Connecticut to essentially to compare districts. And uh, we, we did a, a couple of things that haven't been done before. I think actually this is partly due to the influence of Mr. Whitney, uh, who said, wouldn't it be nice if you could videotape it? So we did. Uh, and then we, we got our tech staff to actually put the whole video show up. It's, it's about an hour's worth of a, of, of a video. So if you go to uh, grottenschools.org, we, we have a new, uh, new website, sim simply grottenschools.org, uh, and r right on the first line there, you'll, you'll see accountability report. And so uh, the, the tech staff did, did a nice job. It's already up, already uh, watched it uh, today. So uh, feel free to go there, and that, that will give you some uh, good information about the accountability index. And the other thing, uh, on, on behalf of uh, Board Chair uh, Watson, I wanted to say we, we really appreciate it. Uh, four members of the RTM came, participated in the dialogue, and now we have uh, the ability for you to, to, to go online. And we're, we're going to do that for, for future presentations. Anytime we have a presentation, uh, we are going to videotape it. Uh, and make it available uh, shortly thereafter, uh, about, about a day or so later. So that will, I think that will be a, a, a helpful thing. Uh, so that's my report, and Thank I'd you. be happy to answer any questions. Representative Mello Miller. Good evening, Dr. Gunnar. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. I know you don't have to, and we appreciate seeing your face here. Um, a just touching on what you just talked about, the focus group, um, can I ask how much this um, expert on magnet schools is costing us and if it was in the budget to do so? It's actually in LEARN's budget. I, I don't know. A LEARN's budget? I'm sorry. We're in the regional, regional education So it's not center. costing Correct. Groton anything. That's okay. Right. That's good to make clear so we yeah. know. And then um, also I was curious, and I know you probably don't have the notes in front of you, but what was going on with Northeast Academy, the um, humidity, the, the mold yes. issues, if you have any updates for I us on that. I do have an update. I, I should soon, though. Okay. And then one more thing about the lead. Do we have any updates on lead and what's going on with that? Not, 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 uh, not a new update, but again, soon. We, we, we've just done some testing, and I should be able to get an update soon. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Representative Massett. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, would it be possible for me to make a request of Dr. Grenier? Um, the Community Outreach Ad Hoc Committee has been meeting, and one of the issues that has been raised is the fact that no one seems to understand how Groton government works, even some of us who've been around here for a while. Would it be possible, is it, well, first of all, is there a civics 
course, yes. would it be possible at some point after budget, it's too busy now, for us to get an overview of that curriculum? Sure. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Representative Bordelon. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, thank you, Dr. Guineer. I want to thank you again for the uh, presentation on Monday. I found it to be uh, very useful, so I appreciate that. Um, I w my, my concern or my question, I guess, that I have is um, I heard that there's a chance with the blueprint of the new building for West Side that there's a chance that the, um, s the groundbreaking start of that once everything is approved, obviously, that there's a chance we could lose the cafeteria um, at West Side early um, within the next, I'm assuming, several months. I don't remember the exact date. Um, and I have a lot of concerns considering West Side is a Title I school that services a lot of children who need the free and reduced lunch, sure. as well as it is a satellite school that also feeds Mary Morrison that does not have a cafeteria. Also, the next concern being that that's the satellite school for the city student, uh, students, city children that utilize that site for camp, utilizing the cafeteria again um, in the summer. That is a place where children um, pick up meals, and that is a uh, within walking distance. So right. um, I'm hoping I heard rumor, not fact necessarily, that there's a possibility that they might try to move the blueprint back. Um, still waiting. I, I didn't know if you could speak about yeah. that at all. Thank you. If you asked me that question 10 days ago, I, I, I would have said uh, the rumor is correct. My understanding from the last permanent school building committee, they're not going to do that. Uh, they, the, the cafeteria is going to stay. But I do want to assure you that e even if the cafeteria had gone, of course, we would have pr still provided the, the, the meals that just would have been cooked probably at the high school and, and transported. But as of, as of today, uh, I was assured that that's not going to happen and it, it will remain open throughout all of next year, at least until the next permanent building committee. Thank you. Uh, Representative Washington. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Dr. Grenet, a couple of meetings ago, I brought up a, I don't know, a request, I'll say, about senior citizens being able to attend school functions like basketball games, football games, plays at no expense because they're taxpayers <laughs> and they don't have children in the school system. So this would be a nice way for them to um, get some bang from their taxes, so to speak. So I brought that up. Uh, I, I'd like you to think about it and come back yeah. and yeah, tell me, what, or just yeah. personally email me, tell right. me what you think about that yeah. issue. There's, I think, Waterford or another town yeah, yeah. does that. They allow their seniors I, to go I, come to these. I don't want to say. I, I think we do, but I'll get I'll get the word, and then I'll get it public. Okay. Thank you. Representative Whitney. Thank you. So yesterday you informed all Northeast Academy parents that yep. uh, after being placed on administrative leave due to a personal matter, a personnel matter, right. that um, Principal Paul Esposito will no longer be serving as principal. Correct. Um, this is all the information we've been provided, and this exceptional event uh, warrants an explanation. Of course, the level of detail should respect the privacy right. of any children or other adults involved. And there are other important questions I have. Is Paul Esposito still employed by Groton Public Schools? If so, where and in what capacity? And will he be administrating or teaching in Groton Public Schools again? Thank you. Well, the first answer to your question is uh, th this is both a personnel matter and a legal matter, and I, I really, the legal process is continuing. So I, I, I really uh, cannot say much. I can, I can say he's still employed in the school district. Uh, he's been reassigned uh, to the high school in a non-administrative position. What is, what is that position? Uh, uh, he is going to be essentially serving as a tutor. And I probably said more than I should have already, as the lawyer chuckles. 
I, I don't want to get in the, uh, but, but believe me, I understand your concern and uh, the, the, the process will continue and we will, uh, we will get information as is appropriate. Did anyone else have a question for Dr. Grenier? Ah, Representative Gustafson. Hi, um, I just had a question about the 2020 plan. I know that um, the present site where Cutler is located, that's, to, that's gonna be demolished, correct? Yes. Is there, um, there's a, a pretty high need for like gym space. I don't know if the wheels are set in motion or something that be looked at. Is there any, any way that we could possibly somehow, you know, preserve the gym end of that facility and knock the rest down? I mean, I'm not sure if that's a feasible yeah. thing, but I, I think the, you know, I, I'm afraid the answer is no. Okay. Uh, but but I will say, when the building is demolished, it, it will become playing fields. All right. Okay. That's what I wasn't sure of. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you, Dr. Grenier. You're, you're welcome. Coming this. Nice to be back. All right. Our next item is uh, our liaison reports, and uh, so I'll ask. Uh, Representative Melendez, if he has a town council report. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, over the last month, the town council approved the merging of two properties in order to build the uh, new Groton Middle School. Uh, there was an invitation sent out um, to become sister cities with Haifa, Israel, and Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, the golf rates uh, for 2019, the, the fees and the membership rates at Shinnecosset um, Golf Course were changed. Um, there was uh, an endorsement of the state greenway designation for Great Brook, Mystic River, and Fishtown Brook Greenway. Um, the TIF master plan was um, referred to the Planning Commission and, to, and uh, so they could set a public hearing. The sale of the property, uh, the uh, Noank Gardens property, the small portion of that was, was approved to be sold. Um, there was a change to the Town Council appointment policy and there was um, a Groton Resilience and Sustainability Task Force was created, and they were tasked with developing natural science, engineering, legal, financial, social policy, and best practices for climate resilience and sustainability in Groton. And there was a request to the state legis legislature made um, to enact special legislation uh, validating the referendum in December. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Bordelon, did you have anything for the Board of Ed? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, most of my information always gets taken because Dr. Gennier already said it. I attended the uh, meeting this Monday, the 11th, room 11 at 6 p.m. Um, they had a presentation. Um, I do have one handout here. It goes over that Next Generation Accountability Index. I encourage everybody to go online and take a look at it. Uh, it is pretty user friendly. Uh, it gives you the, uh, what the state averages, the points we received and where we were graded. It also gives you the comparison of the two middle schools, a breakdown of all the elementary schools, and then a report on the high schools um, where and how we became um, also an alliance district in the areas of uh, the attendance uh, and things like that. So they spoke about that in great detail and, and, and explained a lot of that. So that's the video he referred to. And I do have one of the handouts here. Um, they also had um, rep, um, representation from the high school, um, the principals and guidance counselor um, there to approve uh, five new courses for the upcoming school year. Um, they had a, a discussion on uh, discussion on the high school course proposals. Um, they also had a discussion on policy revisions. And that was pretty much that meeting. That's what I have. Thank you. Sorry, 
sorry. Uh, Representative uh, Whitehouse, do you have anything from economic development? Yes. I want to thank you, Representative Bordelon, for that. All right, so the last uh, EDC meeting, um, they discussed the expanding the TIF program to include uh, sit the city from Thames Street over through Five Corners. Uh, so the same concept as what they're doing in, in downtown town of Groton, um, but basically creating a district in which the future tax revenues can be used to um, leverage in, uh, improvements to improve that area. Uh, and it's still structured so that the town, there, there's no risk to the town. If the plan is half done, the developer backs out, the developer's still on the hook for it. So there's no way in the TIF program the town ends up on the hook for a developer's um, half-developed program. Um, it, it's all structured so that no matter what, we end up better off one way or the other. Uh, they're forming a, a team with other local towns to coordinate with Electric Boat because one of the challenges is that every town is trying to talk to Electric Boat often about the same thing, same questions, same ideas, same suggestions. And Electric Boat is basically big, busy building subs and so they're not able to communicate well with every town in New London County. So they're working together with um, a number of the towns around here, uh, Stonington, Norwich, um, I think New London's involved. Sorry, I don't have the, the exact list, but a number of the towns, they're working together very well. Uh, and one great thing that came about was that in the collaboration, the focus is really on what's best for everyone. So there wasn't a lot of, of you know, my town, your town. It was a really great program. But it's, it's designed to make the, the best environment for Electric Boat to attract and retain employees and the best for the town to be able to get the most um, benefits for hosting Electric Boat. Uh, the outreach program is going very well. Uh, I believe they said there are 10 RTM members signed up um, for that program. Um, so thank you to all of you who did sign up to, to join us in outreach to the community. It's a really valuable thing. You know, uh, businesses really appreciate it when the town comes by for a good reason that isn't about a code violation or a tax collection or something. So it really increases the, the relationship between the town and the businesses and increases the chances businesses will stay here um, to grow. And uh, also in some of the, the up, uh, upcoming projects with the various town properties being sold, they are very close to a public announcement. Um, of course, with everything, it's, there's negotiations involved, so they can't say anything official until the, everything's signed and sealed. But they have a number of preferred developers on a number of different properties. And there's details in the, the packet that was, was passed around. Um, but there's a number of preferred developers and other language that indicates that things are very close to actual solid action on old properties being turned into exciting new projects. And that's what I've got from the EDC. Thank you. Well, that's really good news. Thank you uh, to hear that 10 of our members have volunteered for that uh, with the Economic Development uh, Commission. So that's great. Thank you all. Um, Representative Wells, do you have anything for the golf advisory? Uh, no meeting, no report. No. Uh, <laughs> We've come to really look forward to them. <laughs> I want to know how many likes they have on their Facebook. Representative Washington, would you like to come up and uh, provide us with a finance uh, report? Finance committee report. Okay, thank you. The Finance Committee meeting was called to order at 6.50 p.m. on February 28, 2019, chair, by Chairperson Beverly Washington. Meeting was held at the Groton Senior Center in Classroom A. Members present, Representative Roseanne Katowski, Represent, Representative Wilma Lambert, and Representative Casper, no, Clarence Casper. Um, other members present were Representative Karen Adams, Representative Kathy Chase, Finance Director Cindy Landry, Town Manager John Burt, and Town Clerk Betsy McAlsha. Members absent were Representative Bruce McDermott, Representative Robert Martin, 
and Representative Autumn Hanscom. Unfinished Business 2019-57-2 Power of Initiative on 2% Tax Increase Motion per Section 4.5 Power of Initiative of the Town Charter and Rule 9.4 Power of Initiative of the RTM Rules Resolution proposing to the Town Council that any increase over 2% in the mill rate in the 2020 and future budget is now funded through taxes. Motion made by Representative Katowski, seconded by Rec Representative Lambert. The discussion. Represent Representative Katowski read a prepared statement. The purpose of the power of initiative is to control spending, which is necessary after 20.7% 20, 20. of tax increases over the past four years. As I stated last month, something must be done to control spending. Sending a resolution to the town council from the RTM that anything in excess of 2% increase in mill rate will not be funded through taxes. A 2% cap is reasonable, affordable, and will help our constituents, many of whom are on fixed incomes and not millionaires. Again, we cannot do everything have everything and be everything. There must be priorities. The town must identify needs and wants and eliminate everything that is simply nice to, nice to have. The RTM has the opportunity to support the taxpayers, control spending, and send a resolution to the town council. Any mill rate increase over 2% will not be funded through taxes. I hope the Finance Committee will refer the Power Initiative to the RTM to be discussed and thoroughly vetted so we can come up with something great for the town of Groton taxpayers. Um, after the last Finance Committee meeting, Representative Katowski had a telephone meeting with the town manager and finance director, Cindy Landry. They discussed the budget, spending, school project, tax increase, scheduled for July 2019. In regard to the, in regard to Representative Katowski's suggestion of reducing spending by eliminating positions, their feeling is the town is past the point of eliminating positions. We are at the point of eliminating functions. We also discussed with the amount of money Groton sent out of town yearly and outside agencies talked about not taking on new projects and reviewing the need for some committees and commissions due to the amount of, due to the amount of administrative staff time required. A change in employee benefits to save money. We are at the point we need to do something to reduce spending. Um, Representative Casper stated that 2% mill rate is a bad idea. The mill rate is the budget divided by the grand list. The grand list increased by 1.5%. We had three years of negative growth. If the grand list should be growing and the mill rate would be going down. Representative Casper is also concerned about re-evaluations. Um, Finance Director Landry stated that the mill rate is an artificial number based on two other numbers. The taxpayer portion is what is important. However, you don't know what this is until the end of the budget process. A budget over 2% would have to go back to the town council. By the end of May, the only way to reduce budget over 2% would be to take the money from the fund balance. Finance Director Landry struggles with 2% because of debt service. Debt service has to be included. $1.7 million increase in debt service for the school project the first year. And not tying, to, not tying the percentage into inflation rate is a problem. Should be tied into inflation rate. Town Manager Burt stated that having a budget limit would make budgeting easier. You have to think about how to spend your money. Others were in, in agreement. 
When the town manager presents his budget, he doesn't know what the state budget will be. Town Clerk McCausha stated you assume revenue based on the town manager's knowledge until the state budget is finalized. The town budget is 30, 32% of the total budget. The town manager has no control over the Board of Ed budget. There was a discussion on Governor um, Lamont's proposed budget and how it might affect the town of Groton and taxpayers. There was a discussion on how to have only 2% increase, uh, in a budget increase. Could you eliminate things that are not required to fund? What are the things that we are not required to fund? We are not required to fund outside agencies. Outside agencies are Groton Long Point Police, City of Groton Police, Ledge Light, Health District, the ambulances, libraries, and human services. There was a discussion about this. Pros and cons were discussed. The town manager is not suggesting that we cut these items. The committee decided to amend the original motion. A motion was made by Representative Washington that per section 4.5, power of initiative of the RTM resolution proposing to the town council that any increase over 2% of the taxpayer portion of the budget must be explained in detail by the town council and the Board of Education. Motion was seconded by Representative Katowski in favor of the motion, Representative Casper, Representative Lambert, Representative Katowski, and Representative Washington. Opposed, no, none. The motion was approved. The committee voted to bring this motion to the full RTM. All members were in favor of bringing this motion to the full RTM. Motion to adjourn at 8.15 p.m. made by Representative Katowski, seconded by uh, Representative Lambert, that passed. The next finance meeting will be after the budget meeting, so the next finance meeting will be in June 2019. Thank you. Is there a motion to put these, to approve these minutes? And second from uh, Mark. So we have uh, any discussion on these minutes? Uh, Representative Lambert. It should be on. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> no, so this is on the minutes, correct? So yeah. let's see. All right, are we allowed to um, read what John Birch mentioned today um, regarding the minutes and the proposed resolution? I'm Is gonna read that. Okay, so Did that would be Did he read that at your meeting? I'm sorry? Did he read that at your meeting? No. Then it wouldn't yes, be part of the minutes. Okay, all right, so then I'll wait until then. Okay. All right, thank you. Any comments on the minutes themselves? All right, seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Minutes are approved. Thank you. Would you, did you want to put a motion on the floor? Oh, for the power initiative? Yeah. Um, let me find it now. Or I can- You know what, I'll let Roseanne do that. That's okay. her motion. Okay. Well, I, I will just cut bait here and read the, the comments of the uh, town manager. Um, so maybe we can just circumvent that and go to something more productive, another way of uh, discussing this. Um, so John Burt, I believe it was today, yeah, March, yesterday, March 13th, um, or oh, today, today is March 13th, sorry about that. Um, sent out an email, I believe everyone received it, and I'm just gonna re read it here for the record. I wanted to touch base on the power of initiative topic for tonight, town legal counsel, both Eileen Dugan and Richard Cody, just completed reviewing both the original uh, power of initiative language as well as a revised referral <coughs> out of the finance committee. The opinion of the attorneys is that neither proposal would be legal and so cannot be acted upon. There are several reasons 
They don't follow the law, but the main reason is that since the resolutions propose the limit, the charter based power of the town to make expenditures and appropriations, and because they propose to adjust the procedures for adopting a budget and for exercising a taxing power, the proposed resolutions conflict with the charter and represent an improper effort to amend it. In order to change anything with the budget process, it will require a change to the town charter. Thank you, John. So, uh, probably we wouldn't be able to, if we had that motion on the floor, we would not be able to move forward with a vote. So we can think about how we want to move forward with the, you know, with what the finance committee has brought forth to us, if that makes sense. Or we can do it here, or we can wait till the budget discussion on next, in, further on in the agenda. Representative Lambert. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Could we have a discussion on what was proposed? Well, we should, we, we, could, we could, it would probably be better to have that under budget because we don't have a motion on the floor here, but um, I'd be willing to have a, a discussion here, that's fine. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to start the discussion. So the, f the portion, um, what we received was that, I'm sorry? Well, we, we discuss can discuss it, and then we have to second it in order to have the discussion. I, I, well, we have the minutes. We, you're right. We can wait till the budget discussion, and why don't you wait until we get to the budget discussion later on, and then we don't have to have a motion on the floor on that item. It's just a discussion, please. So could I make a motion? I'd like to make a motion. You to can discuss. make a motion, sure. Second. Can you make a motion? I didn't hear it. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to discuss. Make a motion, say all the words of it. I don't know what you're wanting oh. to discuss. To, to, this, to discuss, John, the finance uh, committee meetings, um, power of initiative, uh, meeting minutes, and John Birch's response. Second. All right, we have a motion on the floor. To, who seconded it? Roseanne Katowski, Representative Katowski, thank you. We have a motion on the floor to open up discussion. So <clears throat> from the email that was received by John Birch today, he mentioned that town legal counsel um, does not see it legal as, as to it would be changing the budget process. But from the meeting minutes uh, from the finance committee meeting, um, it was stated by the finance director Landry that the taxpayer portion is only known at the end of the budget process. And with that uh, being said, how does the current power of initiative proposal um, change the budget process if it's done at the end? And if it does not change the budget process, then what would make it illegal? So if I can, I'd like to read what the power of initiative um, currently is uh, based on the finance committee meeting. So from Representative Washington um, stated that per section 4.5 power of initiative of the RTM resolution proposing to the town council that any increase over 2% of the taxpayer portion of the budget must be explained in detail by the town council and Board of Education. Yeah. Is there a question associated with that? Yes, since the taxpayer portion is um, only known at the end of the budget process, how is it that is illegal to have this power of initiative since it does not change the budget process? Well, Representative Newsom. Thank you, Madam Moderator. The town charter says 4.1.3, relationship with municipal and administrative employees. Speak the louder. Office. I'm sorry. Uh, section 4.1.3 of the charter, relationship with municipal or administrative employees, says the RTM and its members shall not give orders to any subordinates of the town manager or the board of ed, either publicly or privately. The RTM and its members shall deal officially with the town staff solely through the town manager. 
uh, I think the, the language there is saying that the town council and the board of ed must provide us with a detailed uh, description of what the addition over 2%, I think that implies that we're telling them that they have to provide that for us and I, I don't think the town charter allows that. Thank you. I would just add to that that I believe that our entire budget process is constituted by a detailed discussion of the town operations and board of ed uh, budgets. I think that's what we do here in this. And I have to just be honest, when I read that procedurally, I had a question which was, since we're, we have a deadline by charter of May 25th, I believe, to have a finalized budget, I wasn't sure what type of process this detailed explanation would entail in terms of the, the time constraints that we're under. We don't usually have a huge buffer of time before we vote on the final budget numbers. So I think procedurally there's an issue uh, that would bump into some charter mandated deadlines. Uh, Representative Casper. <clears throat> the way, uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. The way I interpret the way uh, this, which came up with the proposal that came out of the Finance Committee is that this would happen after the budget was done, that any increase of more than 2% would require a detailed explanation by the Town Council and the Board of Ed, neither of which are town employees. So I don't, I, I question what uh, Representative Newsom said, that uh, we're not requiring anything from the town employees. Uh, Representative Whitehouse, sorry. <clears throat> so I, I find that we often get into the weeds of what is legal, what's not legal, what are the technical, for, and forget about why we're doing something. Um, so the, the initial power of initiative that was proposed definitely had legal and logistical challenges. Um, I disagree that the, the new one as proposed is illegal. I think it is legal. But whether it is or not, I don't think it's necessary. Um, because probably what it's, what it's asking for is that if there's an increase of more than 2%, that the Board of Ed and the Town Council, which are the two bodies responsible for that, and then to be accountable to the taxpayers and the voters um, within half a year or a year and a half, depending on if it's an election year or not, we're simply asking them to explain why the, the uh, tax increase is more than 2%. And those of us in the RTM may be aware of it because we went through it, but the rest of the town just sees a tax bill. I, I just have to interrupt that all these meetings are televised, so. Oh, of course, but not everyone watches all the meetings. So my. <laughs> well, then they wouldn't, they'd miss but, that too, probably. But, but my, my point is that I don't think this should be necessary to pass because I would think that if, if the town council or board of ed was in a position where they had to, because obviously nobody wants to increase taxes. I don't think the town council is sitting there thinking, how can we take more of their money and spend it? You know, when, when the taxes go up, it's because something happened. For example, a giant building project, as we're currently working on, which is going to be give amazing dividends for the town. But I think it's in the town council and board of ed's best interest when that happens to explain it. I think it would be advisable to create a document that explains, yes, the taxes went up, but this is what we're going to get for it. We're going to get an amazing new middle school, an amazing new elementary schools, and we also have these parks and rec services and other services. So I don't think that we should have to force them to do it. I think they should want to do it, assuming that they want to continue to be the town council and the board of ed after the next election. It's just, it's politically expedient and, and wise for them. Um, and and then there's also the issue of, of it's, this kind of power of initiative is really us forcing them to do something and, and holding them to account, which isn't, isn't really necessary. Um, so I, I think it's something that they should do, but I think it's something that they should do because they want to do it in order to just kind of explain the hard work that they do. And that's, that's the thing that I think a lot of people forget as well, is that the town councilors work extremely hard. And I mean, we work hard, they work really, really hard. And it's a thankless job. And anything that goes wrong is their fault. And anything that goes right, well, we live in a great town, of course we're right. So, I think uh, it gives them a chance to explain, here's some of the benefits that the town is offering, and yeah, we're gonna have to pay for those. 
We, we're a town that has nice things. Nice things cost money. And I think we should change it from this, this almost uh, punitive, like the taxes went up, someone needs to explain what's going on, to simply a, you know, an outreach concept of, yeah, the tax went up because we had to pay for some things. Sometimes it's because of health care costs or because of the stock market or because of something like that. And sometimes it's because we bought nice things. We're, in, we're building an amazing new set of buildings for our schools. But not everyone's going to understand that because maybe they don't read the day and they don't follow the local news. And that's if the local news follows what's going on in our town anyway. So, so I guess my, my point is it, I don't think we're going to make this, you know, put this power initiative through. I don't think we should need to. I think that uh, it's in the town council and board of ed's best interest to, to do this voluntarily because, because I, I think it's the best interest of, of them and of the town to, to share this information and, and really put it out there, what is great about this town, what the money is going for, and why it may cost us a little more to do it. Thank you. Representative Streeter. Thank you. I, I guess what I'm saying or want to say is we already have this process right now. Uh, so it's redundant. We all have a responsibility as representatives. When that budget item comes up, if it looks like it's higher, you ask questions. And the department heads, the town manager, as well as the town council will provide us the explanations for it. And then we have that option to vote yes or vote no. So I, I, don't, I don't know why we're getting into this big hassle as far as, well, we've got to have a, a, a power of initiative. We already have the power to do it. So uh, I wouldn't go any further with it. I, I, think, I think we already have the power and we already have the responsibility, responsibility to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Massett? No, okay. Representative Richards? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just wanted to say briefly that I agree with um, the first comments that you made regarding as a, re a response to, to this uh, proposal. Um, I also agree with Representative Streeter's comments as well. Um, the, we have detailed budget hearings. That's what we're, we have just a schedule that came out that <laughs> we know we're going to be here and, and the town council is going to be doing this for the next several months. Um, and I believe the town council and the board of ed um, are here to answer questions and they do give explanations for these things. So I don't see this as being anything new and, and certainly not something to force and make it a, a bigger, more bureaucratic type of process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Merritt. I would also echo the previous remarks and as far as District 1 is concerned, we're a very busy, very busy district and we're getting along just fine right now and we really don't need any additional weight on our deliberations. Thank you. Representative Kutowski. Now for the other side of the story. Um, requesting an explanation of an increase over 2% in the budget of the taxpayer portion is a reasonable request. This power of initiative asks for information and doesn't impose spending limits. It recognizes a line where it's prudent to require an explanation. It will spark constructive deb debate focused on the largest cost centers. The 2% of the taxpayer portion of the budget refers to the amount of money to be raised from taxes and is a specific number which is known each year. This year it is on page 38 of the FYE adopted budget. Balance to be raised from taxes, 87,497,584. I know it's not a resolution anymore, but I was hoping the RTM would support this because it's reasonable and what is prudent and is what, and is what prudent elected officials will do, as well as it would have been a first step in the right direction to help control spending and protect the taxpayers from unreasonable tax increases. So I know this isn't moving forward, but maybe in our budget conversations later on in the agenda, we could come up with a plan of what we're going to do, considering we're already starting out with a 2% tax increase due to the debt service for the school project. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other? All right, let's <coughs> move on. I'm sorry. Um, I be believe the next item on the agenda is Representative Asset with the Outreach and Community Engagement Committee. Sorry. <coughs> The RTM Outreach and Community Engagement Ad Hoc Committee met on January 28, 2018 at the Senior Center. <coughs> Members present, Representative Casper. Um, whoops. Um, these may be the wrong minutes. Uh -oh. I don't have, I don't think I got a copy of them, right? Um, they are included in the packet. February 25th? Yes. We're on the back of the agenda. I know, but oh, okay. I, I picked up the wrong ones. Sorry about that. Um, and the committee met on February 25th. At, um, at 7 p.m. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, members present, Representative Casper, Representative Katowski, Representative Mello Miller, and Representative Massett. Members absent, Representative Gustafson, Representative Pacino, and Representative Whitehouse. Staff present, um, Town, McClurk, Town Clerk McCausher. The meeting was called to order at 7.05. Uh, the chair welcomed Representative Merritt, who was visiting. The town clerk discussed FOIA guidelines concerning meetings with constituents in individual fire districts. She noted that meetings held in individual fire districts are open to everyone, but the only people allowed to speak or vote our taxpayers in that particular district. The town clerk will contact the state about the legality of calling <coughs> constituent meetings in individual fire districts caucuses. She noted that there is a brochure available that explains how Groton's form of government is set up. She suggested that we may want to consider updating the brochure. Representative Katowski suggested a TV program that would give highlights of the last RTM meeting and explain how the government in Groton works. Representative Casper suggested distributing the brochure to all new registered voters. It was also suggested that the brochure be available at different public locations around town. There was also a suggestion that a short blurb be, be placed on the town's Facebook page explaining the function of the RTM. <clears throat> Representative Mello Miller also stated how important it is to educate our military community about Groton, and that might encourage more military families to participate in Groton government and remain in Groton. There was discussion about how important civics classes are in educating students, not just about the government in Groton, but government as a whole. Representative Massett will draft a written re request um, to the moderator for a referral to the Education Committee, asking the committee to ask the Board of Ed about civics class offerings in their present curriculum. Because of the upcoming budget sessions, it was felt that the meeting in March would be our last until budget deliberations are over. Our next meeting will be March 25th, 2019 at 7 p.m., um, place to be determined. 
Thank you. Uh, we have those minutes read. Is there a motion to accept them? Representative Streeter. And the motion to uh, Representative Adams second. Thank you. Is there any comments on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> any abstentions? All right, minutes are approved. Well, I think this is a really great step forward. I have to say I'm really um, encouraged by the progress you guys have made. And I uh, would maybe encourage you to contact our mayor, Granitoski, who probably teaches civics in her class and may have a syllabus or a lesson plan she could share with you. Yes? Uh, um, and we could maybe move forward jointly. So I think that those are really um, great uh, areas that you're looking at. And I, I do think that that's part of the issue is educating. And then we can maybe move beyond that. And I think this may be a long-term process. So I think it's not going to be uh, you know, quick process to figure out how to move forward. So thank you for meeting those those several times. Um, so the next uh, item on our agenda, unless there's any other you know, uh, thoughts, are the is in the budget uh, section of our agenda for budget discussions. Representative Whitehouse. We're in budget discussions, right? We're in budget discussions. Okay, just want to make sure I was in the right place here. Um, so one, one thing I find when once we're found last year, once we're in the budget, this is of course on my second budget year, is that once we get into the weeds, we get so focused on the individual issues that we don't really look at a big picture. Um, and one, I, one idea I've been speaking with uh, Representative Kutowski and a number of other representatives about is the idea of having, setting a goal as a non-binding resolution, but simply something to discuss and vote on um, to give some structure to the conversation instead of just an open discussion which tends to be dominated by whoever speaks loudest and longest. Um, and so I, I'd like to uh, propose a, a non-binding resolution just for the purpose of discussion, hopefully to come to a conclusion, um, which says the, the RTM shall have a goal for the 2020 budget of the mill rate increasing by no more than, I'm going to say 3%, although I think we can amend that. Um, through the discussion, but it's simply to be a something to discuss, and I don't necessarily have an opinion of if this is a good idea or not, but simply to give a structure to the conversation at this point before we're talking about specific programs and. Can you say that again? Make it a motion and then oh. pause, but while it gets seconded. Thanks. So say the motion. Oh, so the motion says uh, the RTM shall have a goal for the 2020 budget of. The mill rate increasing by no more than three percent. Is that a second from Representative or Massett? I will second for purposes of discussion. Thank you. All right, we have a motion on the floor. I want to just read it again to everyone. Oh, sorry. Do you want to read it? Why don't you read it? Just pause. can you repeat it one sure. more time? Uh, so the RTM shall have a goal for the 2020 budget of the mill rate increasing by no more than 3%. Okay. So that is our, so the goal for the 2020 budget will be um, mill rate not to increase more than 3%. Yep. Is there any discussion on this motion? What could I? What? Can I discuss it? I sure. thought you did, but yeah. sure. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, I'm not necessarily in favor of this, but I want a discussion on it because if we pass it, then we are saying this is our target. We don't want to increase the taxes more than 3%. If we do not pass it, then we are, then we are saying that we are open to higher taxes, especially given that we have the increase because of the, uh, the school funding that we're going to have to pay for, um, that we're open to increasing taxes more because we believe the value of what we get for those taxes is worth the increased cost. But either way, we're kind of setting our tone for when we go into May um, with, with that. And, and uh, so that's kind of how I wanted to, to form the discussion. Thank you. Re Representative Newsom. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Representative Katowski is correct in that we should be looking at this stuff. I mean, I just, I just pulled up 
the upcoming budget on the website. And so the proposed mill rate increase is 5.3%. Now, that hasn't gotten through the town council, that we haven't, that hasn't, nothing's been voted on, that's just the manager's number, but just so, for some perspective. Point of order, is that number correct, 5%? I have uh, the Mayor Granitowski would like to approach, is that? Thank you very Please. much. The, um, the, I've directed the manager to take a look at what's posted on the website. If you look at the link, the link says FYE 2020, but when you open the link, it's last year's budget. It's the FYE 2019 budget. This year, he's actually coming in at 0%. Okay? Thank so you very just, much I wanted to just clarify that. Thank you for clarifying that. I am mistaken. Thank you. Uh, Representative um, Katowski. Well, thank you. That 0% just means the budget's not going over what it was last year. It doesn't mean that due to declining <laughs> revenues that taxes won't increase. So um, we also have to remember that um, I mentioned before in our finance committee meeting, the finance director said that debt service for the school project starts July 1, and it's 1.7 million. And if you equal that out, it comes to a 2% tax increase. So before we even open our budget books this year, we're already at a 2% tax increase. Um, um, anyways, so I would like to see us holding the line on spending. The town manager had some um, really excellent ideas in the finance committee meeting. I would love for him to discuss them with the RTM. And um, <clears throat> I have something I wanted to read, but um, we've talked for years about making the hard decisions, at least for a decade, but we never seem to make the hard decisions and we just kind of kick the can down the road to the next year. And I just think that moving forward, we really can't put any more tax increases on the taxpayers considering they've gone up 20.07% in the past four years. So my goal hopefully is to fund the Board of Education budget at the minimum budget requirement and regarding the Board of Ed budget, I just want to repeat one point. <laughs> Reducing the Board of Ed um, proposed increase is not cutting the Board of Ed budget. The Board of Ed last year was funded at the minimum budget requirement. So if we hear anything about, oh, we were cut last year, we were, we, no one cut the Board of Ed budget last year because we can't cut the budget because of minimum budget rules. So just please keep but that in mind. I think what they're saying is that what they proposed was cut. Right. They, we, okay. Right. Their proposed increase was eliminated, yeah. reduced, cut. That's but their, exactly what they mean. But their budget wasn't cut. Their budget can't be cut. So anyways, um, hopefully we'll have a no tax increase. Did you want to speak? Uh, Mayor Granitowski? I don't have my budget book with me. I didn't get a chance to pick it up, so I'm looking at notes here. Um, but the 1.7 that was referenced has already been built into the budget. And even with that, we are still at 0%. OK, so um, we're, we're doing everything we can to keep it low before it even gets to you um, and making those tough policy decisions that um, were, were referenced. Thank you, Madam hey, Moderator. Thank you. Representative Mello Miller? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Moderator. I just want to say for the point of, of all of us as, as elected representatives do not want taxes to go up. I think all of our goals should ultimately be to keep taxes as low as possible. I don't think that anyone wants them high. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made and sometimes we have to make, we, I mean, we saw it last year, we have to make very tough decisions during budget season, but I don't think any one of us wants to increase taxes or increase the mill rate. So I feel like in a sense this discussion is kind of, it, it, it's, it, it's pointless because none of us want to raise taxes and to set a resolution that maybe we won't be able to abide by because of extenuating circumstances, because of schools or et cetera. I think we all can agree that we all try our best to keep it as low as we can. And that's all we can ask of ourselves. But we won't know for sure because we don't have budget books and we don't know until it happens. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Monaghan. Uh, 
Thank you, Madam Moderator. I, I don't understand the, res the motion in light of the prior discussion. Put it closer on, to your mouth. I do not understand the motion in terms of we've just had a discussion earlier in the session, uh, which it's directly related to, especially since the proponent says he's not in support of it. I view this as, uh, again, we have the budget process. Mr. Streeter said it eloquently. This is another attempt. Uh, we have a budget process. Let's just follow the budget process. Voting on this doesn't do anything. Thank you. Representative Merritt? I'm afraid I'm going to re-echo the remarks that have just been said in the fact that we have a process now. We go line item by line item. I don't know what I'm going to say until I see the line items, how I'm going to vote. And I think that's the process we should be going by. I don't feel that I want to be held to a limit at this point in time. I can lower my limit thoughts. I can raise them. But I don't want to be held to a limit. What, what am I here for if I'm going to be held to, to a limit? Thank you. Representative Whitehouse, would you like to speak for the final time on this issue? I'd so like to explain what the, the purpose of setting a target is. Um, so I, I, w I work in marketing and sales, and um, one thing in, in my business is the idea of I'm going to do as much as I can or as little as I can usually doesn't mean much. So if, if I was trying to set 20 appointments a week, if I set that target, I'll probably get near 20. If I say I'm going to set as many appointments as I can, I might set 11. I might set 15. Who knows what a lot is? The purpose of setting a target is to, is to have something to aim for and to try to do better than. And uh, the process, if I'm not mistaken, our line item process is not in the RTM rules or the charter. So is, is that just based on tradition? Is that correct? Repeat that. The, the, the line by line process, because I didn't find it in the RTM rules or the charter. Is that just the tradition of how we've done it? That's how I've always right. done it when I was on before. I don't know if it's, yeah. there's some. So, but, but, but so the process is, is, and it works well enough, but it's, it is neither in the charter or the RTM rules. It's not in writing. It's simply the way it's always been done. So adding a, a goal target, um, I've heard anecdotally that that's been done in the past as well. But it's, it's simply providing a little bit of guidance to ourselves of what our focus is. Is it on keeping the taxes lower or is it on maintaining the, the benefits? And, and hopefully, because why here we have some, some revenues that have come in this year that have helped with the budget. Um, hopefully this won't be an issue at all. We set a target of 3% and we'll come in well under it and everything will be great once we see the budget. But it's, it's simply saying, you know, yes is saying, okay, the tax rates are priority and no is saying the benefits are our priority. And of course, we're always trying to keep the taxes as low as we can, but as low as we can could be 5% if, if that's, uh, you know, if that's what what circumstances force us. And it's just a goal. It's not a law. It's not a requirement. No one's going to come back and say, you said this. But it's, it's simply, it's a way to set, this is the direction we're trying to head in, focusing on. There's two sides of the scale, cost and benefit. And we're, we're talking about which one. Um, I think the more important thing to talk about is not if we should be voting on this, because the more we talk about process, the later we're here and the less we get done. But is actually talk about which is more important to us. Is it the tax rate? or is it the benefits of the town? Personally, I think that it is worth paying for some of the great things we have. Um, this Taj Mahal of the Senior Center, as I've heard it called, the great schools we're gonna have, the, the benefits, the good services, the things that make people move this town, I think that's worth it. And I think that's, that's why we're willing to pay for that. But I, I think we should, as a body, have that conversation and you know, have a conversation before we're going line by line and say, what's our philosophy? Are we focused on saving every dollar at whatever it costs us? Or are we focused on having a great town with great things? And that may cost us a little more and to have that, that discussion. Representative Richards. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I would like to say that I agree with the comments from Representative Mello Miller and Monahan and Merritt. Um, I, I think that we all come from with different ideas about the budget. I don't expect that we're all going to agree on a, a target, and um, I, I think that's fine. I think that we each have our vote, and that's how we do it, and we have those discussions. And that's my two cents. Thank you. 
Thank you. Representative Stevenson. With all due respect, this sounds like uh, trying to establish a political cantilever within the uh, body, and I don't approve of that. I think um, while the purposes you set forward sound pretty good, as representatives of government, we have different shareholders and different objectives that we have to meet to. We're not in finance, we're not in marketing, we're here to manage the town. And trying to set these artificial uh, goals where we don't know what it's ultimately gonna be like sounds like trying to do the whole process with an arm behind our back. Uh, I know I'm not standing on very much being my first time here, but as someone with that unique perspective, I would say, uh, it just sounds to me that um, the town's been working pretty well since I've been here and we haven't had this rule in place, so I don't see why it needs to be added now. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Bordelon. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I, you know, I, 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 we keep going back to the new schools and, uh, you know, if we want Groton <clears throat> to grow, is, it, we have to look at the costs and the gain here. In my opinion, when I was growing up here, the schools needed to be renovated then and they weren't. So now it's put upon our laps now, tax increase, what have you. This is something that should have been moved a long time ago and it is unfortunate that now we are taking the brunt of the cost, but it's important that we do because we have health concerns in our schools that need to move forward. So I feel it is worth the cost for, for that benefit. I, I do not agree with setting, I, I, I'm all for making sure taxes are, are fair and, and represent the town as, as, as it needs to be. Uh, but setting a limit preemptively before we even have the town manager's budget, when we have strict guidelines, which I was trying to look up, and I unfortunately, you called on me a little too soon, but um, when you look at uh, section uh, 9.4, paragraph two, you know, it states here what our duties are and how far we can cut um, we only can cut so far, uh, and someone else that's been here a while can help me, um, the, man the t town managers, we can cut all the way down to zero, yeah. And there's only so much we can do two thirds to, to add, right. Over the, so, so I mean, there, there are already guidelines set. Um, uh, I mean, it, 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 until we actually look at those numbers and see what that binder is gonna hold, I, I don't think it's fair to the taxpayers to, go ahead and say, that's it, we don't need it, we don't need this. So I, I encourage that we go into it with an open mind, looking at the benefit of all districts and the benefit of the whole town, but making sure that we are, you know, doing the fair things that we need to do and, you know, if things need to happen, they need to happen for, for a certain reason. So I, I, I think that I, I can't support it. Representative Casper. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I think we're wasting our time. Um, it's a motion without any meaning, except for fluff. Appearance it has no teeth behind it. Uh, I think each of us has our own goals, like it's been stated, and uh, it's, we're wasting our time, we're wasting our breath. You know, let's just uh, vote on it. Yeah vote it down and get it over with. Representative uh, Powers. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I'd like to make a motion to move the question. Second. Second. Was Powers who seconded? Okay, that's not debatable, and it's a two-thirds majority needed. So all in favor of calling the question, raise your hand. What? Um, the motion is to vote on the motion on the table. That's what we're voting on right now. The vote, that's what I just said, isn't it? Two thirds to call the question. Right. Exactly. That's what we're voting on. That's what I just said. It's a motion to move the question. Sorry. Did I say something wrong? Yeah. 
Okay. What did I say? That's okay. <laughs> what did I say? No, it, the, can I just clarify, when we vote on this motion, it will be a majority vote. This is a two-thirds vote is to call the question. Okay? We're all on the same page? Sorry, I didn't mean to misspeak. So can we have all opposed? <coughs> Voting on. We're voting on calling the question. We're voting on whether we should vote. We should stop discussion, let me put it that way, on the motion that's on the floor, which Representative Whitehouse put up, made, the, the motion to have a non-binding resolution. We're, we're ending discussion on that motion. It's non-debatable. It takes two-thirds majority. To move the question. Exactly. To move the question. I did. To, who's opposed? Oh, easier to count the no's. That's <laughs> what we're doing. Four, me. Did you get Katowski, Chase, Newsom, Evan? Thank you. Okay, that motion passes. It's abstention, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth move. All right, thank you. I, so we now have a um, motion on the floor, which I will read. Okay. Okay. This is a non-binding resolution that the RTM shall have a goal for 2020 of mill rate increasing no more than 3%. That motion is on the floor. It takes a simple majority of members present to pass. Do you want to? All in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Okay. Katowski, Melendez, and White. All opposed, please raise your hand. Any abstentions? Oh, come on, Doug. Okay, that motion <laughs> fails. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any other discussion under this budget item or other business? We can move right seamlessly into that. Or this budget? Other business? Representative Katowski? I have a question for the assistant town manager. Um, it's a really hard question. Um, I'm following up on some information that uh, Representative Pascalini, I believe, brought to the body, or the, a question he brought to the body in January. And last month, we had a really good explanation of the Board of Education grants revenue. So the question he asked in January, and I, since he's not here, I just want to ask it again. Why doesn't the RTM vote on these grant line items. They're over $10,000, just a question, and I, I'm sure you don't have it because it's a really hard question. But um, maybe next month we could get an explanation. I don't have an answer for that. Surprise. Well, anyways, I'll make sure that uh, I bring it up and we'll, we will get you an answer on that. Representative Bordelon. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I know there's some legal uh, things to my question that might not be able to be discussed. And I know John Bird's not here, unfortunately, but um, I was brought up at the town council meeting and I think because some people watch RTM and not town council, but I think um, if there's any explanation that can be made or just to put out regarding the uh, new referendum that we're gonna have to go back to uh, for the school. Uh, Mayor Granitowski, would you like to comment on that? Because my understanding is we have to go back because the time, my understanding, and I'm not going to quote, the time was not posted in a timely manner, not in a right, so I just think it should be talked about here, at least brought up. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I have to choose my words very carefully because it is a legal matter, so. Um, the posting for the prior referendum was not done according to statutes 
and therefore um, the council has decided to move forward um, on two fronts. We're pursuing two possible remedies simultaneously. Um, that way we have the best, we're optimizing our odds of things going forward in a favorable manner. One of those avenues that we're pursuing is a new referendum which will take place May 6, Mr. Zagami? I believe that's it. It is a Monday and it will coincide with the city election. We're trying to do this as quickly as we can and as ex expeditiously and um, saving as much money as we can since there will already be two voting places open. Uh, all the voting places will be open and it will be um, on a Monday instead. So we'll have to make sure that we do our um, diligence in publicizing the date when we get closer to the time. And I think that's pretty much all I can say. Uh, we're pursuing a legislative remedy as well. Thank you. Representative Massett. Did you want to ask the mayor um, something? Mayor Granitaski. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what happens if the referendum fails? We, as I said, we have two-pronged approach. So um, we are pursuing both simultaneously. So there's always the hope of the legislative remedy. However, if the new referendum would fail, then we are back to renovating as new instead of building new. Thank you. This Thank is you. not something anyone wants to be doing. Trust me. Thank you. Representative Bailey. Um, Thank you, Madam Moderator. Also a question. If Mayor Grantowski, <laughs> there were about 10 hands that shot up after you spoke, <laughs> if you don't mind. I, I think I heard because my hearing isn't that great, but uh, what, did you say two places to vote at or? No, oh. um, May 6th is a Monday and that's the normal city of Groton election day. They have a different election day. There's a handful of, here's my civics teacher, a handful of municipalities in the state of Connecticut vote in the spring rather than the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Okay. So because that election is already taking place, we figured we would just try to do it the same day to try to minimize the mm -hmm. cost to the taxpayers. Thank you very much, Mayor Granitowski. Thank you very much, You're Madam welcome. Moderator. Thank you. Representative Bordelon, did you have your hand up? And just one more question, if possible, because people are asking me and I don't have the answer. Um, how much will this election be costing us? I know there will be some savings, but people are asking how much more now, because we've been, because of the whole process from the Merit property on down to this now, what's the next cost we're facing with this? Right, so an election in the town of Groton at all seven polling places costs approximately $22,000. Representative Washington, did you have a question? And I, I just want you to be clear that this delay does not affect the, the original amount of money that we, will, that we voted on. No, it does, it does not change the original amount of money. It is just, um, it does not change the original amount of money. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't catch other hands. I know a bunch were up. Those are the ones I caught. Is that it? Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there any other business on our agenda? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to Second. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of March. St. Patty's Day Parade, St. Patrick's Day.